This is Leafs Morning Take with Nick Alberga and Jay Rosehill. Now we've got a fight started here right off the bat with Rosehill. 30 minutes of live, non-stop Leafs talk starts now. That wasn't a win. That was a statement. What a shit pumping last night at Scotia Bank Arena. It's the Thursday edition. Excuse me, the Wednesday edition of Leafs Morning Take. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, the Leafs on Broadway coming up on Thursday. It's Nick Alberga and Jay Rosehill. Rosie, I was just too fired up after taking in the proceedings last night at Scotia Bank Arena. How funny is that? My first game in like years in that barn as a spectator and in 318, and they throw up a seven spot in the Anaheim Ducks. Seriously, so much for a sleeper game and you being a, a bad omen in that barn. That never happened at all, man. It was a it was a pomping. We talked a little bit about taking the puck line and I forgot and kind of chucked the game on and realized, oh man, and uh missed the bet on that one. But my God, what a pumping. I mean, they just they were toying with the team. It was like they're in different leagues. The best part about it is I was a, I was on the Mitch Marner shot prop. That didn't hit. The Austin Matthews goal prop didn't hit. But I actually think this is a positive development, which we're going to get to over the next half hour or so. Certainly, I think the fact that they had six different goal scorers, only one from the top four, the big four, and that, of course, being John Tavares, who kicked off the scoring. Remember to subscribe, tap that like button, leave us a review wherever you're checking us out. Don't forget to visit theleafsnation.com for the very latest on all things Toronto Maple Leafs. Thoughts, comments, concerns, or questions. Drop us a line down in the chat below. We'll get to that later on. Got a big-time guest on today's show as well, American actor, big-time Los Angeles Kings fan. In fact, he was in the building last week when the Leafs ship pumped the LA Kings, Isaiah Mustafa. Yes, the Old Spice guy. We're going to ask him about that. He's coming up in about 10 minutes from now, Rosie. Yeah, that'll be good, man. I'd like to pick his brain a little bit about uh, things down in L.A. and where he grew up and everything else. But, uh, you know, hopefully if he's following the Leafs, he's excited as everybody else right now. He's following the Leafs, but he he did text me last night. He did say this is the same team. And I said, I do agree with you uh, because he's like, I hope you realize they're going to lose in the first round. So certainly we'll get to that conversation coming up with Isaiah. I know Jay. Rosie feels a bit different about that. You just never know with this team. They do look much different. And defensively speaking is the biggest difference for me. Elias Samsonov, the 28 save, shattered his second straight donut last night. So let's get over the boards. <laughs> Toronto 7, Anaheim 0. And the backstory to this game is the fact that I go out and watch my buddy Adam Henrique. Takes a puck in the face in the first shift, Rosie. I didn't even sit in my seat. I go and watch the game, and I'm like, where the fuck is this guy? I go on Twitter, got hit in the face, saw the replay. And fortunately, good Burford kid, you knew he was coming back. A couple of repairs, comes back for the second period, but you wonder if he should have came back because, man, oh, man, was that a shit pumping or what? From puck drop, man, like that was really, really impressive. And we've talked about this a lot all year, those trap games. No trap games with this team right now, right? No, they haven't been. I mean... Another reason why when guys say, oh, it's the same old team, it's just not. They aren't showing any signs of the same old team last year. I know they put up 115 points last year, whatever, in the playoffs or in the regular season, sorry. But uh, they had all kinds of trappings and, you know, Austin Matthews would go get five points one night and you'd win a game and you'd drop a couple and go on a few more. And this is just like, no, we're done with that shit. It seems like they've left it behind them. To shit pump a team that bad, I know it's the Anaheim Ducks and it's not the Boston Bruins, but my God, it was just top to bottom. I mean, it was professionalism. They didn't they didn't start playing, you know, shinny hockey out there. They weren't throwing waist high sauces and behind the backers. They didn't start dicking around. There wasn't odd man rushes against once they got up a few goals and everyone's looking for their cookies. Even at five six seven nothing they were playing the right way playing hockey the way their system is meant to be played and it was just just sitting there going wow man this is a hockey team that is is ready to play hockey every single night and they've been doing it for weeks and weeks man yeah I thought it was a real professional victory to your point like I, I thought Austin Matthews like he didn't score but I thought he was buzzing Mitch Marner obviously picks up two points two assists now up to a 23 game point streak a 15 game point streak here for this Maple Leafs tweet team 12-0-3 in that stretch. But, like, I felt like they really didn't force anything. And I think along those lines, even Pierre Engvall, who came back from his one-game suspension, I thought by far that was his best game of the season. Like, he was noticeable every shift. He brought some jam, brought that heavy shot. Um, I was really, really impressed with him. Kerfoot, um, Pontus Holmberg, 
Connor Timmons with three apples. Like that was like the biggest story for me looking at last night's game is that the depth players have really, really picked up their pace offensively. And nights like last night, you score seven times. And it go only, uh, again, only one of the big four scored in the game. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, I'm thinking about what it's like to be in that locker room and part of that team. And I mean, sometimes when you got the likes of, you know, Mitch Marners and Austin Matthews and Johnny T's and, and Willie and these guys, like it, you kind of, they throw a pretty big shadow, right? And you kind of feel like when you're that secondary scoring, you're kind of in their shadow and you're not talked about as much. And I just don't think that's the the case for this team right now. I mean, that is the core and the, the star bunch for the team. There's no question. But like you say, like Holmberg and Timmons with three apples last night, Kerfoot and Angval both snipe last night. And we're talking about them earlier in the week, you know, like we need more out of them. They need to be more offensive. They need to show up and they need to be seen in games more often. You know, Austin Matthews, I think he had five shots, but just one apple, yeah. you know, it's nice that they can step back and, and the other boys can like, we, we can handle this tonight, boys, because, you know, I keep saying like, it seemed like last year when, you know, they'd win some games, it would be this out of the ordinary performance by one of those stars. And it's like, okay, great. But is he going to do that in game six of the playoffs? Like you need a better hockey team. And this is just a goddamn hockey team, man. Like from top to bottom, I mean, when they have a couple bad shifts, you know, the goalie bails them out and stops a breakaway and stops two big backdoor chances. And then all of a sudden they can reset without being like, oh my God, we're down one. And it's just from top to bottom, man. It's just, it doesn't seem like the same team as before. And no one knows what's going to happen in playoffs, but looking at the depth and, and what they have available, it's not like they've just scrapped together some shit behind these big yeah. boys. And hopefully that works. Fingers crossed. It's, it's better than that. Well, just look at the, the last week alone, right? You date back to last Tuesday, uh, impressive victory by Ilya Samsonov in Dallas. He was the major story. I think, you know, in the couple games, like the big boys really, really stepped up. And then last night, it was more about the depth players stepping up. And I think when you can provide offense from the bottom six, it actually opens up so much more in the top six. And we talked about the power play yesterday. It wasn't even a factor. They were 0 for 3. Uh, coming into the game, the Ducks possessed the league's worst PK, and and that wasn't even a story last night, Rosie. Yeah, and again, I like that even more because it's like you don't even have to give us anything on a silver platter for us to put up this kind of a performance. We can do it on our own. You don't have to give us three, four power plays a night for us to have a chance. Um, you don't have to have your big boys, you know, putting on a, a head spinning performance to give yourself a chance or to have a blowout like this. It can it can happen from anybody, and it can happen top to bottom. And again, I know it's just the the Anaheim Ducks and they're uh, they're failing a little bit right now. They're not playing their best hockey, but they're an NHL team, and it's their secondary players in the lineup right now and through that roster that are stepping up saying hey I'm here too and I can just imagine in that room and getting on the plane here and everyone's just feeling like we're we're kind of special right now and not that that should go to their heads but guy everyone in that room should be feeling really good like they're a part of this and they mean something and and they're doing something to contribute which is which is huge when you got that many guys on a roster and they're all buzzing Speaking of contributions, contract year Michael Bunting, the prime age of 27. He was a rookie last year. We won't even get into that conversation about age. Huh. But he scores his sixth of the campaign, a nine-game point streak, two goals, nine assists, 11 points over that frame. 30 games now, six tucks, 21 points, 82-game pace. You're looking at 16 and 57. You look at his numbers last year, 23 and 40 for 63. So what he's pretty much telling us, he's a 20-40 he's a guy. So my question is this. He's a free agent. What's that pay on the open market and how important is it, Rosie, for the Leafs to resign this guy? Yeah, it's hard, man. He's one of those guys who's just kind of come out of nowhere and worked out. You know, he's kind of been that staple yeah. on, you know, the wing of the top line there and he can he can play with those big boys and he can he can understand how they work and how they operate and he can complement, you know, the likes of of Marner and Matthews and and Johnny and he can play with Nylander and then if need be you know we've seen earlier in the year he can bounce around the lineup and play some other roles too he's pretty versatile and he's just one of those guys that you need where you don't play pay him seven million bucks and he can jump up there and be effective I mean he's he's at that million dollar mark and you don't find those guys all the time and the problem with the salary cap is when you do you're gonna have to pay them the equivalent of what they're they've been performing like after the fact and there's no way that you can always keep the same lineup together when you're having success because the guys that aren't being paid very high, which you have to have those guys on your lineup to stay under the cap, they're going to be like, um, I'm not paying, playing for a million bucks again when I'm a 
four million dollar player it's just, it's just not realistic so i don't know i'm i'm that's why i'm excited about this year like this is the year where in the salary cap area you build and you build and you build and and you get to the point where okay this is our year and then eventually you know i'm worried about this team in the next year or two because they're gonna have to tear some things apart they're gonna have to rebuild and whatever they put together might not have the same chemistry and it's not gonna be as pretty like you're sitting fancy right now with how this thing's operating you got the likes of geo and and the buntings making under a million bucks and producing the way they are yeah I'm worried about it, and I don't know what you're going to have to pay them. I bet you you would know more about that as far as yeah. the comparables and everything like that, but it's going to be a hell of a lot more than he's getting paid right now, and I just don't see you being able to, to re-sign everyone that you need to in the next little while. And that's just still uh, like everybody trying to compare and contrast to uh, Zach Hyman. It's not the same type of conversation. As you referenced, comes over from Arizona to your deal, I believe, 850 k per season. Like, he wants to get paid. I don't care where the fuck this guy's from. He could be from Scarborough. He can be from Milton, Oakville. He can be for Siberia, for all I care. Like, he wants to get paid. Every player should get paid. I'm actually siding with the players in this type of scenario. So, you know, these storylines and narratives are coming out in the next couple of weeks. Take the hometown disc discount, Michael. Like, I, I don't see it. And I think off the top of my head, market value's got to be around four, four and a half, maybe stretching five. Like, every team is looking for a secondary type score who can play in your top six and bring some bite. And then you look at Michael Bunting, like he provides a lot for this team, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. You're seeing him more and more too. I know. I love how he's, I guess he's just a talker and an energy guy and he's yeah. one of those personalities and you see it on the ice. Like I, I want him to be more of that rat, that Marshawn, like in guys' face, like just cocky as hell pissing everybody off and then burying and making it even worse like I like that attitude we don't really have a lot of that I don't think you need a ton of it but it's nice to see when you know guys are chirping at our bench or doing something you got a guy standing there with his fists on the boards just giving it to a guy you don't have to fight you don't have to do any of that shit just just be annoying yeah. be a pain in the ass and and he can do all that stuff and yeah I I just I don't see uh I don't see it being easy on Kyle Dubas, assuming he's not fired after this season, which he's not going to be. I <laughs> just that think voice, that it's going to be difficult. He's going to have to make some. Uh, he's going to have to make some decisions on far as far as we're going to have to let this guy go and then try to find another guy to replace him, and hopefully it works out the same. Because you can't just re-sign everyone for what they're worth and keep your roster together. You're going to have to let somebody go and try to replace him with another million dollar guy that can do the same job. And a lot of that's timing. A lot of that's availability. I think it's going to be difficult, but again, that's why I get horned up about this season. Cause this is a season after this, there's going to be a lot of shit up in the air and who knows where it's going to fall. Okay, Rosie, let's bring in my guy and my former beer league line mate, American actor, big time Los Angeles Kings fan. He wasn't in the building last night at Scotiabank Arena. In fact, he was watching his team get shit pumped in Buffalo. It's my guy, wow. Isaiah Mustafa. Wow. What's up, buddy? Wow. You're going to start with well, that. You're going to come out with that. Oh, my God. Had I known this was, was this, I don't know if I would have come on this. Uh, wow. Um, all right. Well, so if we're going to go that direction, let's fucking go that direction then. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. I really want to see what you guys do come April, May. You know, I, I, I you know, listen, I'm, re I'm a realist. I know my team, you know, we're not going to win the Stanley Cup every year. Unlike most of Leafs fans believe you guys are truly going to win the Cup every year and you truly do not get out of the first round every year. I mean, it is fucking embarrassing. You know what I mean? Get a backbone and do just get past the first round. That's all I ask. I mean, I would be a Leafs fan if you guys did that. I mean, fuck me. Wow. Yeah. I come in and I see. That's why I brought that eyes, man. He brings the heat. And I, I honestly think Isaiah picked this up from all those years listening to me rant on Siri on, on NHL Network Radio, right? Yeah, uh, no, most definitely, dude. You are the biggest king hater, the king slayer, as I, I dubbed you at one point in time, that I know. Um, you know what I mean? Um I, I don't I don't know how why you do it. Uh, I I hear you say it all the time. Uh, like I said, I'm a realist. I understand the Kings. They're they are going through. Uh, you know, they're building. They're getting character. They're trying to get there. You know, they're they're not the team yeah. that they were back in 2012, 2014. Um, but they're working that way. You know, what I mean, they've got some goaltending issues that they're working on right now. Some defensive issues that they're working on right now. But they're finding an identity. They'll get there. You know, maybe not yeah. this year, maybe not even next year. But, I mean, you know, as they can only get better. You know what I mean? But 
let's talk about your Leafs. They can only get worse. That's what I, you know what I mean? Like, like you guys have reached the pinnacle right now. Like, this is it. Like, everybody's screaming, holy shit, they just dumped fucking 13 points on both California teams. What? A, well, this is amazing. I can't believe it. I'll go back to 2017 when we dumped seven points in that same arena on you guys, if you don't remember uh, correctly. I'll remind you. I remember you. it. Um, that Thank happened. You. The one thing I will say about when we play you guys, it's always a blowout. No matter wh- which team wins, it's always a blowout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so be it. So, so that's your read on the Leafs. On the Leafs, you think they're pretenders, Isaiah? I wouldn't say pretenders. I would say this. I'll, I'll give you my honest, you know, non Nick yeah. Alberga uh, uh, <laughs> smack talk. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my honest assessment. I think the team has an ability to go forward. I think they can get past the first round. I think what needs to happen, though, is they need to shore up their defense a little bit more, and they need a lot more production from third and fourth line players. Because your top line, your top two lines, stout. Nobody can fuck with them, straight up. But when you get into the playoffs, you need that backup. You need that support from those third and fourth lines, and I don't know if they have that. Um, if those dudes are playing good right now, seven weeks before the All-Star break, that's great. Are they going to be playing this way in April and May? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you, you mentioned Michael Bunting earlier. Amazing player. I love watching this kid. I don't know what he's going to bring during the playoffs. I hope he brings something strong. If he doesn't, I, I can see him going somewhere else. Speaking of going somewhere else, let's talk about this. If you guys don't make the playoffs this year, if you don't, you can say goodbye to Matthews. It, it, and, and I can't wait. I cannot wait because he's going to look so good in black and silver. You have Ooh. no idea. You got you got an American kid there. Maybe he wants to go home. I don't know. Now, Yeesh. this is heavy. I know. I know. <laughs> believe me. But it's going to happen. And I know, I know it's in the back of the minds of every Leafs fan. Like, holy shit. Did he just say that? Because I was just thinking that, like, you know, a couple months ago when they were when they went, you know, 0-5 on their on their, you know, West Coast road trip. I'm telling you right now, if if you guys don't make the playoffs, I don't know. Somebody's backing up the Brinks truck and he's going somewhere else. It may not be LA, but he ain't staying here. It's funny. You say that actually, yeah, no, it's funny you say that too, because I was asking somebody, I was pulling somebody who's like an insider, I guess, in the NHL. I'm like, if Matthews didn't stay, where would he go? And the first team he brought up was the Los Angeles Kings. Why don't you paint a picture for Los Angeles? So what's it like to have the Kings around there among other sports teams? And obviously the night scene is, is unmatched, right? Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said paint the pictures of, of our team with Matthews. I just, I, I, I started seeing sugar. <laughs> and shit. I, I, I got excited. Um, no, seriously though. Um, what's it like? <laughs> you know, LA LA is an interesting place. We 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 love a champion. Like you know, I mean, seventeen NBA championships. Um, we 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 expect champions, but I, I'll be honest. If we don't get a champion, we're not. We're like, all right, next year. Like we're really quick to kind of turn the page and go and move on. Um, that's that's pretty much how it is now. Kings fans are special because we got spoiled with those years with the cup. Um, and so that's, and then we came to expect that. And then suddenly we didn't make the playoffs for, for, for five years. And it, and it was really like kind of eye opening and a little sobering. So now we're kind of just realists. Like we see things the way they are. And we're kind of back to this mode of, of like, well, look, if they make the playoffs, that's great. If they win, if they win, out, come out of the first round, that's great. And we, we don't expect too much, but we, we do expect them to be doing better than they are right now. Um, and I think that's because of our offseason pickups with, with Fiala and, and, uh, and, and Dowdy coming back and, uh, and our team being more healthy uh, than they were at the end of the year last year. But like I said, we, we expect more from our team just based off of, um, you know, these, these acquisitions. Yeah. So let me Isaiah, you my seem... co-host, Rosie. Go ahead, Rosie. Yeah, good to meet you, Ben. I, uh, you seem pretty passionate about hey. the hockey, and you seem like you're you're diving right into it. It's great to see. I uh, was curious. You know, we're seeing in the NHL nowadays more and more. You know, real high end, world class players coming from the likes of California and Arizona and whatnot. And you know, I think that uh, you know you started to see that as as the 2000s started to roll on as, you know, Wayne Gretzky moved down to LA and the Mighty Ducks made such an impact in the cultural, you know, landscape and whatnot. I was wondering, I know you played, you know, football track and some basketball. Was hockey ever on your radar growing up and and being in California or was that something that was a little bit, uh, did you miss that boat? 
No, let me tell you how how that happened. Uh, like when I was in high school, I had a buddy who played who played ball hockey all the time, and occasionally he played ice hockey. And I always would see his gloves in the front seat of his car. I'm like, what? Like what the fuck are these? Um, and then he he told me, and I was like, oh, interesting. And then I went to a couple Kings with him, and I was like, oh, this is cool, you know, whatever. But I, I wasn't focused on it. I was trying to get a basketball scholarship. Um, then I got into college, and you know, I, I played football, went to the Rose Bowl, had a great time. Um, I played a little bit, like as you guys say, I had a cup of coffee in the pros, you know, with with four different teams. But while I was playing with Oakland, um, I I picked up hockey. Just I started playing it just for something to like get some extra cardio in, and I didn't really continue playing it. Uh, I, I I put it down because I was like, oh, if I get hurt, I'm gonna get in trouble, whatever. And then when I was 30, 38, yeah, the Kings. That's 2012 when they when they start, decided to go on that run. I was like, this looks so much fun. Like I like so much fun. I want to try this. I want to get into it. So I just bought skates, bought gear. I hired this dude he, like for 10 days straight. He took me on the ice for four hours a day, and he would basically taught me how to skate and 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 stick handle and everything. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was 10 days, so it wasn't like I was like you know fucking you know, Marner the next day, but, but, you know, it, I, it was something, you know what I mean? It was a start. So I played literally for a year straight every day uh, to the point where I, I, I felt like confident enough to where I could get on the ice and play some pickup. And that's, that's where I started this like love for hockey. Um, and also awesome. during that 2012 time, um, I just come, come off of a relationship that was like horrible, you know, like, you know, when you get a bad relationship and you got to find something else to do because you're like up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep and you're, you know, you're just you're crying. fighting the urge to call her back. You, you want to text and you're like, just don't do it. And you put the phone down. <laughs> so I would watch NHL uh, Network like a madman yeah. because that was the only thing that I would watch that I, I was like, oh, man, I'll just watch this because. I didn't know anything about it, so I, I would learn, like, things, you know, like, and I would sit there and watch it and watch it. So that season, I knew everything. I knew stats. I was crazy. Like, I, knew, I knew so much about players from that season that I was like, oh, now I'm in, you know, like, like I'm just, a, like, a stat machine. So, and I would rattle off these stats to people, and they go, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what, why do you know so much about this game? And I'm like, well, I watched NHL Network, like, 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then I also I also met like Kevin Weeks and and Noodles. Uh, I just I would tweet at them, you know what I mean. So then they would tweet me back, and then I got to know them. And so now like I'm 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 boys with them and stuff. Pretty much the same way I met Alberga here. Yeah, and that's the best part about this whole story, and that's what makes this sport so fantastic. Like that's how me and Isaiah initially linked up was through NHL Network Radio. You tweeted at me after one of my shows, and then we became buddies. Like to a point where. You were in Toronto filming a couple of years back and you came out to my beer league game and played on my line. Like oh, yeah. that was fucking incredible, man. It was so much fun. Dropped an <laughs> apple. You did. He got yeah, an apple yeah, and he, he's just a modest escape. guy. Like you're way better than you give yourself credit for. Love it. Oh, dude, I appreciate, I appreciate that. And I'll, to all the Leafs fans, just just realize it's smack talk between me and Alberta. I'm, I don't care. Like if you guys win the cup, I'm truly happy. for You, you know what I mean? Like I, I think you've, you've suffered long enough. You deserve one. So. Uh, I just like giving this guy shit. <laughs> no, I love that. I, I love the rapport back and forth. Uh, so I brought you to my spot on Friday. So Rosie's coming into town, <laughs> former Toronto Maple Leaf and Rosie. He's bringing me to the alumni box. I'm bringing him to Petty Cash. That was your first look at Petty Cash. What'd you think? Uh, Rosie, buckle up, because it's going to be a long <laughs> ride. I'm just telling you right now. Uh, he, he'll take you to the back bar. Then he'll take... Then after a while, he'll go like, no, 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 no. Let me take you to the front bar and let me show you what's going on uh -huh. up there. Um, it's yeah. a, it's, it's a, it's a fun place, but I, I think what I say, Ruby Soho, much better. Uh, it's, it's a more chill vibe. You can actually have a conversation in there. You can talk to people. You know, uh, in my opinion, better looking staff. I, that's just my Ooh, opinion. Wow. Rosie, you Ooh. let me know when you go. You let me know. But uh, my opinion is better looking staff. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Hey, I'm just excited to have uh, options on the table, and it sounds like we're going to have the keys to the city cruising around with uh, oh, Alberga here, so right, that'll buddy. be nice. The king of, the king, of let, king West, they call the kid. Let, let, me, let me tell you, Rosie, let me tell you what I told him. It, I, said, I said, listen, dude, I, I go, I, I have been relegated to, like, third line for life now, in, in that, in that, you know, because I'm, I'm married, so I'm just a third line guy. I'm a role player. You know what I mean? And he, and he goes, oh, no, no, man, you still got it. I go, no, no, don't get me wrong. Like, I'll always wear a letter when it comes to that. But I'm, I'm yep. still, you know, I'm just on the third line. I'm pushing. I'm helping the boys on the top two lines. 
I'm just I'm, I'm cheering them. I'm a rah rah guy in the room. I'm I'm getting them going. I'm pushing them out the door. But you know, I, I I'm a role player. You know, I, I'm the the consummate winger. I'm I hear you. I just want to watch your, Nick. Uh, I'm just gonna watch Nick work out there. I'll uh, I'll do a little chat and get a girl to the curb, and then into the cab she'll go. See you later. <laughs> I just want to ride both your coattails to the top, Isaiah. Before we let you go here, uh, what, what projects are you working on? I know you're in Toronto, coming back in a couple of weeks oh, for man. a couple of months, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll, for a couple of months. I'll be out there for for six months, man. I'm 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 Love here for it. a minute, you know. Um, uh, yeah, uh, about to hit the Bed Bath and Beyond in a minute. Give me some bedding. Give me some cold some cold weather gear. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm working on a show called Cross. It's based off of, uh, James Patterson novels, uh, the Alex Cross novels. I think you saw there's some, there were some movies with Morgan Freeman, uh, one with Tyler Perry. Um, but yeah, now it's a series, uh, it's, it's going to be on Amazon. Um, you, you know, we start shooting here, uh, within, within like a month or so. So we're just doing some prep right now and getting ready to go. Awesome. awesome. I want some residuals from that show. I want to meet some of your friends on that <laughs> show and, uh, <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you your time some? today, man. Uh, dude, hey, Rosie, it was nice meeting you, bud. Uh, uh, Alberga, you know, you can always get me on anytime. Um, all I got to say is this, dude, keep your nose to the grindstone. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Uh, the, the front front bar bartender. You know what I'm talking about. You know who I'm uh, talking about. <laughs> okay. You never know. You never know. Thanks, Isaiah. <laughs> Good to meet you, man. Guy's an absolute beauty, man. Like he just brings so much energy, energy, so much passion. Um, and it's an amazing, you know, it's an amazing thing about this game too, Rosie. And we're gonna get to the points about Canada better the day in a second. But like, how much the game has grown even in the last fifteen years? Where you hear a story like that, somebody in Los Angeles um, really didn't cover, follow, you know, the NHL or hockey in his life, and stumbles upon this game and and, and falls in love with it here. Yeah, for sure. It's. Uh... It's nice to see, right, guys that didn't really grow up with hockey that they come to it on their own. Because so many of us, you know, growing up in Canada or whatever, it's just like party. It's just ingrained in you. But for someone that grew up elsewhere and fell in love with the game later, you always love to hear that stuff. And obviously, smart guy, passionate about lots of stuff. So it's good to see he's uh, he's jumping into that world right now, man. And it's nice you get went out with him. Right. Sounds like you found a little unicorn too at some front bar oh. and. Uh, Aaron, That's I'll have ended. to tell you about that behind the scenes, my dude. Uh, so we're putting you <laughs> on the clock here. The wrap-up is brought to you by our friends at Points Bet Canada. It has yeah, been a we're gonna very take difficult... One here. Yeah, very difficult start it... for me. So it's all you, buddy. Hey, you were on fire for a long time, man. You miss a couple and you act like the sky's falling. But I'll take a swing at one here. It's uh, I got the Calgary Flames playing the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, Flames have not been up to snuff lately, and I think that uh, Sutter is going to lay the hammer down and figure out what's wrong with them with his uh, wealth of experience. So I'm taking the Calgary Flames. I flip-flopped a little bit on whether I'm going puck line or money line, but you know, there's just no value in the money line right now. Minus one and a half on the puck line, you get plus 40 or money back i'm going puck line seeing if the flames can get her done they're a much better team i believe than they're showing right now and i am fingers crossed that they're going to show that during my betting segment which is happening tonight so let's see if they can get a couple on them uh tonight i think they're a way better team i love this bet and just so you know you win this one you move on to tomorrow and you're right oh for two is not like the skies falling type territory it's not like toronto in october type territory but i just wasn't seeing the board the way you have the last little while so i wanted to give you the rights to the uh, points back canada bet of the day today and i like the call by the way i think if you're looking for some juice maybe the uh, the flames in regulation as well how about that love it all right, that's going to do it for that part of the uh, program. Really appreciate you stepping up. The The chat is lively today. A lot of conversation about uh, Alex Kerfoot plus Bo Horvat. I don't know if you saw the statement yesterday with the Vancouver Canucks, but pretty much said, I'm not fucking talking about this again until something happens. <laughs> you ever seen that before? Like these statements are getting out of hand, dude. Yeah, guys, seems like they're like frustrated. And uh, I can't imagine it's been a great environment hanging out in the... Uh vancouver canucks locker room right now but yeah it just seems like frustration to him and just not a lot of happy campers on that side of the country no no they're not they're not feeling very very great right now and certainly the vancouver canucks are primed to make some moves with the next little while if you're toronto are you going after horvat like would you i don't even know if kerfoot's going to get the job done in a trade he's an expiring contract but we talked about yesterday um is horvat a guy you'd identify and say we should take a look at him for sure <sighs> 
I mean, if you can get him, if you, if it's something you can't say no to, but as far as uh, pursuing him heavily and offering up a whole bunch for him, I say no. I, I don't think that uh, that yeah. that's something that we desperately need. We, we're showing every single day that we've got uh, that spot and that role and that thing covered right now. And I think you'd look elsewhere uh, if you're really going to push something and make something happen. I don't think he's essential. I actually think the opposite, and we talked about this yesterday. I'm going big game hunting. You look at the contract here, he's having 20 goals. I think you need depth scoring. I think he's a guy who can play up and down your lineup, 3C, 2C, wherever the fuck you want to put him. And I, he could even play the wing, right? I think in a perfect world, you're looking for an upgrade on on, on uh, Gino Malgin there on the, on the second line. Not to take anything away from Dennis. Malgin's been a great story this season. Robertson's banged up. But you're looking for depth and even more depth because we all know the story with this team the last little while is uh secondary scoring and offense in this in the stanley cup playoffs right which is kind of ironic because this team all they do is score and and that's the big part of this story as we wrap is this lease offense is finally you know finding its gear right like it's taken a while to get to this level where they're pumping seven a night but like that's the most amazing and astonishing part about this start rosie especially in the month of november was like they weren't really scoring goals now the offense is coming i think the rest of the league is on notice no yeah, I would think so. They're starting to heat up, and they've been on fire win-wise and points getting-wise and certain guys uh, showing some big-time seasons so far. But like you say, they're starting to put the puck in the net, and that's been their their problem in the playoffs. So, um, I again, I just see different vibes from this team as far as their character and their strength and their ability to, to overcome things and to weather storms and not to panic. They seem really, really calm and confident, where before they seemed more hopeful and and almost jittery and it, it's just it just looks different to me and um you know we're seeing games like last night as as a reason why gonna be a lot of fun coming up tomorrow night on broadway msg it doesn't get much better than that as you know having played in this league the new york rangers uh they were subject of ridicule for the good part of like eight weeks but they're really starting to catch fire behind igor shashurkin they've won four in a row against the maple Leafs, a 15 game point streak on the line so was the 23 game point streak for Mitch Marner. So it'll be lovely to document that game, preview that one as we move forward here. Rosie, excellent job today. You smashed it, buddy. Thanks, buddy. We will see you tomorrow. We got a whole run of these babies coming up. So uh, exciting we times, do. exciting times. It is. There you have it. That's Jay Rosehill. Many thanks to my buddy Isaiah Mustafa for dropping by. I'm Nick Alberga. Thanks so much for listening and watching. Take care. <laughs>